Hi, it's Clementine, and you're listening to Historias Roqueras. My career in metal started um, in 2010 when I joined the first band I was in, which is called uh, Wisdom from Paris. They're, they're still active. Um, uh, when I was with them, I recorded a, a, a cover of a song um, from Lorena McKinnon uh, that uh, caught the attention of the Austrian symphonic metal band called Serenity on Nepon Records. And um, they really liked the video and my voice, and they wanted me to join them as a guest singer for their next tour. And um, we did that together. It was a lot of fun. And um, the collaboration went so well and the, the people really enjoyed our duets that they wanted to make me become a part of the band. So I joined Serenity in 2012, I think, and we worked on a first album together, which was uh, War of Ages that was released in 2013. And we went on a couple of headline tours together. Um, and I think it was uh, at the end of 2013, I got an email um, from Thomas from Visions of Atlantis um, as the band was uh, once again changing lineup and he was asking me if I would be willing to join to join Visions to make a final record and a final tour and um, I was really touched that they wanted me to be the last um, figure for, for the band and the last voice and I always wanted to make a uh, like pure old school symphonic metal because I really loved that style when I was younger. I discovered metal with Nightwish and everything. So for me, it was sort of a dream come true when I was younger to do to do that. So I accepted. And um, it did not end after the album. Um, actually, after a couple of years playing shows and festivals, we realized very fast actually that the, um, the band was doing good and then the ambience and the... The team was great and Tom was building faith in the band again and he was like, okay, let's go on and not um, and, and not stop the band. So I permanently joined Visions of Atlantis in 2000, well, when I joined the band um, um, five years ago now. Uh, on the side of it, I collaborated with uh, amazing artists like Myrath Ma from uh, France and Tunisia. I collaborated with Kai Hansen on his solo album. I, I found it with uh, Amanda Somerville, Anna Brunner and Marina Letareka, Exit Eden uh, last year and did a great album together covering amazing pop songs, turning them into met metal anthems. So I've been pretty busy. I've also collaborated with um, the French opera project called Melted Space. Um, did three tours together. Um, I feature in the choirs of um, the previous last album and I feature on the new one that was released this year as well, Darkening, Darkening Light. So a lot of music to check out if, if you want to follow everything I did. <laughs> we didn't have... And even in our society, I think rock and roll is connected to people, you know, and I don't think that we managed to um, cultivate that at some point so that it's an, it's an, it's unpopular. It's not popular at all to be in a rock band to, and the world, the word metal scares people more than, than attracts them. Um, but it's changing now because we have huge bands still like a Gojira and, and, and others that have managed to go abroad. And we have the Hellfest Festival, which is an amazing example of how metal can be totally friendly and positive. So maybe the image of metal in France is going to change so that there is more recognition. But still, it's it's kind of music. It's a hard music that uh, still is belongs to a very niche of listeners. And that is why also when you're a musician, there are a lot of schools for jazz, a lot of schools for classic. Um, but but very few schools for uh, more and modern music and, and rock and roll. And I think we, we lack of this. There are amazing musicians in France, absolutely That's amazing true. bands. The underground scene, and I know it pretty well myself as, as I promote shows as, as pretty much still an underground level. You know, when we gather 300 people, it's like, wow. So we know what it is. Uh, it, there are huge fans of metal in France, but the numbers aren't there because, because it, I think it's closely related to how it's perceived and 
because it's never promoted and it's it has a very poor image and, and few education in that in that domain. I uh, started playing the piano uh, when I was uh, eight or nine until I was sixteen. Um, started with a jazz. Uh, jazz teacher that uh, very early um, taught me how to improvise so that's something I valued with time to be able just to um, jam with the music and, and free myself from the barriers of oh my god what am I doing to me music is about creating it's not about playing someone else's piece um, so very very early I started to write my own things um, with the piano and it helps me now to um, write beginning of songs as, as well. Um, then I took my, I started singing in choirs when I was uh, 11 or 12. And then I took my very first real classic singing lessons when I joined the, uh, the special class for teenagers at the at Lyon Nationals Opera when I was 16, from 16 to 17. I, I was in, in intense training uh, with piano lessons, theater lessons, um, and and choirs, choir singing and classic singing, private lessons and all that. It was pretty intense. It was amazing, um, very demanding. Um, I did, the, the universe was a bit weird, but but um, I learned a lot from there. And then I kept singing in semi-professional sacred music choirs because I, I love sacred music, and I. Uh, took um, continue to take uh, private lessons with private teachers, and now I'm mostly training on, on my own. That's a big word. I I do write melodies um, with the with uh, with harmonies like chords behind it. I don't write yet full songs because I would need to know how to really use a. Um, software for that I need I need to get time to, to uh, train myself so that I can rec record more of the music that I have inside of me but I, I do write I do write things I always have ideas and on the latest visions of Atlantis actually the last song um, prior to the lost I, I wrote it it was rearranged by our producer but but uh, that's a hundred percent my my Your thing. Idea. Not yet. Um, we have toured uh, Europe uh, quite a few times um, now, uh, festivals and tours with uh, Serenity, Camelot. Um, and we're doing another one with Camelot in, in, uh, in March, and we're very looking forward to that. Uh, yet we haven't been too far, but next year, <laughs> next year we... Yeah, we're doing the cruise again, the 70,000 tons of metal cruise. We're going back to Mexico. This we did um, earlier in the, in our career together. And we're finally hitting South America. And we're so excited about it to have five shows in oh, wow. countries where people have been asked asking us. I, I, I do have a lot of people um, on Instagram and Facebook that are from that part of the world it's amazing and i we got a lot of messages like when are you going to chile argentina brazil and peru and, and um this this is happening in early february and we're we're very happy about it and we we're gonna play for the next for the first time also next year we're gonna play scandinavia oh wow um, yeah so uh, we sort of called like there is a world tour coming up because we want you know when you throw an idea in a universe, it, if it's right for you, it hears you and it answers back, and there you go. Um, I've met some Colombian people, and um, what I can tell just from uh, about them as human beings, they're way more um, they're way more warm people. They were more they express their their emotions way more. They they tend to be more close physically also, like wishing to hug and to touch. Their mo they demonstrate their feelings in a, in a physical way. And I, 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 I think there is a lot of things to give in a hug and, and in a handshake and uh, in physical touch with people. And I think we Europeans, sometimes we, we miss that, you know, that human warmth of just like 
being a wolf pack and being close together physically. And I, I want to see if this is like this there, if, if, if people are more into showing how they feel like making the relationship more genuine, I would say. So I, I, I don't have like real expectations. I, because that would be from prejudice and I hate it. I want to, I want to leave the experience without having anything in mind because I, I want to take it for what it is not being, disappointed or overwhelmed or anything i i'm very very looking forward and i, I we, we we're gonna spend a very few time in each town that we're gonna play in because we have to fly every day but i really truly hope we can have a sense or a glimpse of the life there the people there the culture and what it's like to live in this part of the world This is, this is, um, it's a very, uh, it's a highly controversial uh, movement. Um, and the media are not neutral. The French media, they're... They never they're, are. They're, yeah, yeah. Never. <laughs> um, it comes from the fact that uh, there was a series of, of um, decisions from the government that were just about cutting budgets on the low budgets. It's like... They take, yeah, like we take five euros from the people who actually get an, a financial help because uh, because we need to to not spend public money. We we cut there because it's spending too much money. We cut there, and then on the other hand, we privatize a lot of public services that make them more expensive and less present for the people that really need it. Hospitals and trains and and and. And everything is touched, like even the, the, the people working for, um, for emergencies and, and the nurses and um, fire, firemen, poli policemen, people in, in, in education. It's like every, almost every aspect of society is, and, and the environmental issue is, is concerned by all the measures the government has been taking. And it's not just Macron's fault, it's even the previous presidents were had but it's a it's an accumulation of things that just drove people mad and at some point i think the french people they're like okay this is this is too much of what we can take as an insult that that's what they say i don't i i my opinion on this is 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 fragile because um i was not on the field and um and that movement doesn't have a leader so they they ask for things very unorganized randomly. and very unorganized very randomly and sometimes it doesn't make sense altogether but but it's a revolution the people from france the very people the, the modest people and those who have sympathy for them they're demonstrating that they do not want this government and this way of politics anymore they want a, a complete change of rules and rulers to try to live in a, in a society that will be fairer and more transparent and stop giving the most money to the very few people that, that are in, out there and controlling everything. And this is not just France. I mean, this is, as you said, this is the sum of politics that is that you can system that you can see in most of, in a lot of countries. And um, yeah, this is, this is, this is the start of a revolution. And I have no idea how it's going to end up because it's, not gonna end end up that soon. <laughs> I get. I guess the media only show uh, the violence because they want to put discredit on the movement. But this there is a you minority. Go. You know, it's like it's go. like Muslims and extremists. They the those who are terrorists they call themselves Muslims, but all the Man. Muslims aren't terrorists. You know, it's the same thing. It's the That's same so with great. The, the the yellow jacket movement. At first, is not about it's violence. Piece. It's it's huh. a peaceful way. It's a dem it's a demonstration. People go there. Uh, yes, they did things. This, they 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 went on, on on huge companies. They they went on streets. They they went on um, to try to stop things on the, on highways and stuff. They did things in order to be heard. But they the the very core of these people that really want things to change. They're not here to. To, to, to destroy it. There are always people who take advantage of demonstrations, no matter what people demonstrate about, to no. put the fake yellow jacket on and just destroy things for the sake well. of it.
you can unless you live and you really detach yourself from 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 everything um what society is going through affects you it affects your friends it affects your family or your colleagues it affects people you know it just affects if if you have compassion for the people sharing the planet with you and you hear that they cut this low that they did that they put the tax on these people you're like that what the hell you know and music in a sense is making you and the people listening to it get get out of of all that stop thinking about it going to shows listening to music is is a very good yeah. therapy to not focus on on all of that but for sure i'm i'm glad somehow that uh, what i what i do is not yet Totally concerned by all these problems, also because I wanted to avoid them. I wanted to live in a way where I was independent, trying to be as much as independent as I as I could, and take advantage of a system somehow and not suffer from it too much. <laughs> ah, terrible. Or you don't, or you don't <laughs> feel at, at all. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> No, we're you know we have that president who made a speech to try to show um, Trump the way to go, like make our planet great again. But I'm sorry, just make fucking France great again, like we used to be centuries ago, a country that was leading intellectuals all over the world because we had a sense of excellence, we had a sense of art, we had a sense of. Of, of a way of living we had thinkers philosophers artists and we contributed to um raise people's awareness and and and, and um abilities all over the world you know that that period of time 17th century and then we sort of concert looked at ourselves like we have friends from now on our way of ruling and our and our name just will shine because of the past no like we are far from being role models on any level and i'm so sad to see so much pride where there is nothing to be proud of i mean i make it caricature but it's it's the it's exactly what i want to tell like why do you say that trump make planet great again when yourself are not doing anything to help with the um, ecologic transition like macron doesn't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> about about ecology and and climate change and and um, this is so much hypocrisy it makes me angry he can he can hear it mm. so yeah nuclear nuclear electricity generated by nuclear is is terrible uh, we have centrals that aren't young at all and and we should have years ago started a change but people from france don't like change so much either i understand it's hard to rule but things need things need to be done to go in the right direction for the planet and they should have had years ago years yeah. ago they say they say anyway that uh, of course it is so dangerous if out of control Hmm. Nuclear is the cleanest, apparently, apparently, right? The cleanest uh, way to generate electricity. No, because you, they don't still don't know how to what to do with the waste that it generates. Uh, uh, you know, I can tell you, I can tell you, they they don't dump it in France. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. That's that's the thing. So that's why it's like it's not in France anymore. Ta-da! It's clean. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> We're, we live in the same planet. You know, we share it all together. There's no, there is no boundaries when it comes to climate change. It doesn't stay cool in France and gets horrible somewhere else. You know, global warming. It's global. You know, so it's I can't I can't even believe that. And um, no, it's not green. It's 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 just not. I don't believe nuclear is 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 green energy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, generally, um, I grew up with uh, Michael Jackson and Madonna. Um, I also grew up with a French artist called called uh, Mylène Farmer. Um, that is out of metal. And then my my dad was listening to so much music, so many different styles that I was introduced to classic jazz and. French stuff and, and international pop rock. I, I loved Queen. 
um, for a long time, and um, I love Frank Sinatra. <laughs> so, and, and and electronic music as well. It's it's everything is is inspiring. If you want to talk about metal, um, I was a huge fan of uh, the early night Nightwish, um, the Bruce Dickinson era of uh, Iron Maiden. Um, and then I was into Evergrey a lot. So I'm so happy I'm touring with them in March. <laughs> nice. And and then it's a lot of bands that uh, later on came out that really amazed me, like bands like Periphery, Tesseract. Uh, I'm a lot into progressive metal. I think it's so creative. I, I like it very much. A tesseract that was uh, used to be Opeth. If you put put it in the progressive um, periphery, I love as well. Um, tool. If you put it in progressive, it, it depends. It's such a wide range. It's it's hard to put. Um, it's, it's hard to. It's, it's in so many different types of progressive metal. Of course, as well. yes. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> well, Taria was a, was a revolution to me uh, when I was 16 and I was introduced to a uh, censured child. I had no idea what I was listening to. You know, I had never word, I had never heard of metal because even though my dad was listening to stuff like Led Zeppelin and uh, my mom a little bit of uh, U2 and um, Tears for Fears and this kind of things, it was, it was not as heavy uh, as, as, as metal. And I had no idea. I was like, is that kind of medieval music or what is it? And, and, and her voice, her operatic voice at the time I was learning that kind of style was like, it was a natural way for me to envision how I could develop my singing. And her voice touched me so much. And, and the music was so romantic and, and so dramatic. And at the same time, I completely fell in love in, in, in Nightwish Universe back then through through her voice as well. I remember when I, I never managed to see them when she was part of it. I once oh, wow. ran to a ticket office and the same day got sold out. I was so sad. <laughs> and then when they played Lyon again, it was it was not with her anymore. But I yeah, I remember when I saw her as a solo artist because these couple of albums she did I really like and yeah, when she entered the stage, I felt I was older, you know, and it was I was not listening to Nightwish so much anymore. But I had I felt it from my past, like a, a huge wave of love coming out. I was like, oh my God, it's it's her, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she 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 had a huge impact. Then I there are some voices that I truly like. Uh, the one from um, Simon from Epica, Sharon from Within Temptation. Um, these are great voices. <laughs> well, you know, the band was uh, founded in 2000. Um, it's over f 15 years ago. Yeah. So it, it, Visions of Atlantis belongs to the very first bands that ever did uh, symphonic metal. And um, we, Visions, suffered a lot of lineup changes. We're not all lucky with the people we start working with. It's just about finding the right people, whatever you do. And it took the band a while before they found the right people to go on with. And um, but what, but that's why the music changed so much. Also, like if you take a look at Visions of Atlantis musical history, you can split it in two, and then you have one other record in the middle, and then we are doing something else now, starting a, a new era, going back to the roots of what we did in the past. Like if you, the two first records of Visions of Atlantis are definitely pure old school symphonic metal. And that's what we wanted to do again. Like that's the influences, the style with its trademarks and its codes and its universe, universe, <laughs> that, <laughs> that we wanted to uh, bring back to life. And, and we didn't care if it sounded more like this band or another we're we're part of the same jar that's yeah. why it's close if you listen to death metal i'm sorry but there are 30 bands 
30,000 bands that sound the same. And it's just about which song, which voice, which music would, would touch this and this person. And, and you can like many bands from the same genre or you can like only one. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. All the bands deserve to exist even though they, we don't revolutionize everything. Like we would never pretend that we brought something new to that genre. Um, this is not what we're looking for. We're looking for music that we enjoy playing, singing, and sharing. That's, that's what we do. Um, um, the Deep and the Dark, Book of Nature, uh, The Grand Illusion, The Last Home, and Ritual Night from the last album. <laughs> I, I was very, very touched by Winter Night. Um, actually, I think that song brought me into the band. Um, then we, I, I really like the Trinity album. Um, there are very good, good tracks there. Um, Through My Eyes, At the Back of Beyond, uh, Seven Seas. Um, um, Passing Dead End is pretty fun on stage, uh, playing live. And from other back catalogs, we play New Dawn also because it's such a, such a short, high powered energy song. And that generally wakes everyone up in, in, in the crowd. And this, this, I like, I like this very much as well. We have a lot of things going on. Like sometimes we're more aggressive in the singing. Some, sometimes we're totally melodic. Sometimes we're playing a ballad and sometimes we're playing very fast songs. And, and uh, I think if you like this genre, you don't get tired when you watch Visions live. Mm. Three. three. Out of the metal scene, there is one album that I um, shelter in a lot from Ludovico Enodi. It's called In a Time Lapse. In a Time Lapse. And it's instrumental music. It's, this guy is a pianist, Ludovico Enodi. It's E-I-N-A-U-D-I. -I. Um, and uh, it's amazing music. It's organic music. It's a little bit melancholic, but it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. I, I, I love this record. I would take it on a desert island with me. <laughs> um, I think Altered States from Tesseract is one album. This album is, is, is perfect. As you said, with images and words, this record is, is, is amazing. And then the third one, From Mars to Sirius by Kojira. This ah. is really good. Mm. There's a movie I really like um, that is called um, The Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. It's a metaphor of, 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 of love. Of If you're meant to love someone, you're going to love that person. And uh, it's uh, very well played, performed by Jim Carrey at Cat Winslet, and it's it's amazing. It's a bit surreal sometimes how they portray situations, and I love the creativity of that movie, and it's a bit sad. It really touches your heart. Um, I, I, I love it. It's very poetic. Um, when I was young, I, I was a huge fan of Jurassic Park, <laughs> the first one. <laughs> Nothing okay. to do with the other one. And... Um, a movie that really, really touched me too was the Schindler's List. Oh, and about the it's from Spielberg. It's yeah, in during the Second movie. Second World War. Like um, a beautiful mind, um, and then the the old Batman's from Tim Burton, uh, the one with the the Catwoman, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. I, I love that movie so much when I was younger too. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three books? Yeah, <laughs> three books. Oh, A Brave New World from Aldous Huxley. Um, the Alchemist from Paolo Coelho. And uh, um, is it uh, um, Withering Heights from um, Emily Bronte? I, I loved it. Uh, Jen Eyre as well. Uh, I loved also. And other French authors. Um, but yeah, those those really really. Lord of the Rings, uh, amazing. <laughs> I was I was stuck in that book. I wish I wish it had never ended. 
honestly. 